Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome to my Saturday hodgepodge. I'm a little bit uh, at sixes and sevens about what to do about numbering uh, this Saturday hodgepodge. As you may know, I, I missed last Saturday because holiday and family obligations really kind of, uh, you know, limited my time to make a Saturday hodgepodge video. I did actually put one up on Sunday and then I took it down because I just really didn't like it. I felt like I just kind of rushed through for the sake of making a video and you know what I said it's not that I, I was necessarily thought what I said was wrong or ashamed of it it just felt I don't know it just felt like I was doing it for the sake of doing it rather than because I had something I actually wanted to say so I took that one down so I don't know if this is going to be hodgepodge number 117 or number 118 I think I'll probably number 117 and act like I didn't miss the week uh, but that means that this Saturday hodgepodge might be a little bit more uh, you know, a little longer uh, than some of my Saturday hodgepodges. I want to take advantage of this Saturday to do a wrap-up for November and a TBR for December, even though by the time you see this, it'll be December the 4th. And, you know, December will have been uh, well underway. So just real quickly uh, to do a wrap-up. So November was in Digithon, uh, a month in which we read, uh, try to read books by uh, indigenous or First Nations uh, authors. Uh, and I did that. I had a really good uh, in Digithon. Uh, and it was also nonfiction November, and there was some overlap there and some other things there I want to talk about. So, real quickly, going back through the books that I read, uh, let's do the in Digithon books I read first. So, the first book I read for in Digithon was The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This is actually kind of a carryover uh, from October, where I kind of intended to read this from like my Halloween book uh, because it is a horror novel. Uh, but I did finish it early uh, in November, and I really liked it, uh, which was somewhat of a surprise to me um, because I don't really read horror at all. Uh, so I was a little surprised that I liked it. And I think I mentioned before, at first it felt kind of goofy, and I was like, ah, this is just, you know, feels a little silly and weird. But the more deep that you get into it, the, the more kind of terrifying uh, it is, uh, and the more it resonates, uh, and I think the more... Uh, the uh, the cultural aspects uh, that the authors also brings in begin to kind of uh, accumulate in your mind and make it easier for you to to kind of fall into this uh, into this world in which the the events described in the story take place. Uh, I found the the middle part to be scarier than than maybe the ending, but I thought you know things were really wrapped up in in a, in a good way, and I, I really liked it. Uh, I also read uh, Tracks by Louise Erdrich. This was, I don't know, my uh, sixth or seventh Louise Erdrich novel, and I do have uh, plans to try to read all of them. Uh, but I really liked, uh, really liked this. Uh, it's one of her earlier novels. It's a little simpler in its construction. It primarily follows two characters or two storylines. A lot of times Louise Erdrich's novels follow many more uh, than just those two. But, but I really liked it. I, I thought it was powerful. I, I didn't like it as much as Love Medicine. And this is in that kind of Love Medicine uh, series of novels she wrote. I think there are like eight of them. Maybe not eight. Maybe there are six of them in that series. And I skipped a couple to go from Love Medicine to Tracks. But... Uh, it didn't necessarily impact uh, my understanding of what was happening here, and I really liked this book. I also read uh, Joy Harjo's um, memoir, Crazy Brave. I read that as an ebook, so I'll put an image of the cover up over here. I uh, read that on my Kindle as an ebook. Uh, and, you know, I'm not necessarily always a, a big memoir fan. I kind of like the way in which Harjoy uh, blends her poetry and imagery uh, and her spirituality uh, in with her memoir. I really liked that. Uh, maybe not my favorite um, memoir because it felt a little less straightforward and that may be a product of being a little bit older uh, than some other memoirs I've read like in her own, uh, in my own moccasins, um, which I read, which I thought was really good, but I, but I did enjoy reading it. And then I also read Louise Erdrich's new uh, novel this month and that is The Sentence. And I'm just gonna tell you right now uh, I wrote a review of this for uh, Open Letters Review, uh, which I'll leave a link to uh, down below, which you can see my kind of full thoughts. But, you know, um, I was watching uh, Scott Nell's video about uh, language and reviewing, which they did. They consulted a whole bunch of uh, booktubers who review books on their channels. They didn't consult me. 
Thanks, God. Now, anyway, probably for good reason. And uh, and one of the things that came up was that Hannah from Hannah's Books was one of the people uh, who they got input from, and she made a point of saying that you know when she writes a review uh, for publication, it's different than when she talks about uh, a book on her channel. And you know, I, I'm I'm nowhere near at Hannah's level of reviewing books. I, I've really just gotten started, and it's been fun. I'm going to talk about this again in a minute. Uh, but I would say that, that what I would say here on my channel is a little bit different than probably what I wrote about the novel and that I just think this is just a great book for book lovers. It's about a lot of stuff. A Louise, a Louise Erdrich novel is never just about one thing. There's always an element of the Native American experience, the First Nations person experience, uh, and cultural elements that are wrapped up in the book. This one also touches on issues related to 2020, including the murder of George, George Floyd and the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which is ongoing. So if those are kind of triggering things for you, you need to know that. But this is really a celebration of words and books and authors. And it's just, I really liked it. I liked this. Uh, for me, this this was on the whole a better book than uh, the book that, or I enjoyed this more, I should say, maybe not a better book. I enjoyed this book more than I enjoyed uh, The Night Watchman, for which she won this year's Pulitzer Prize? Yes, I think. Uh, but anyway, uh, this book was just delightful, a really easy, quick read, and a, and a book for book lovers, I thought. Uh, so those are my four kind of uh, Indigathon reads, and I don't know how they fit in the prompts. <laughs> if you follow my channel, you know when I do these read-alongs or these readathon things, I almost never follow the prompts. You know, I don't know what that is, some kind of a character flaw I have. Uh, but, you know, I, I did enjoy all four of those books. I also did quite a bit of nonfiction uh, reading in November for nonfiction November. Um, Mary and Ryan and I finished up our buddy read of Isabel Wilkerson's The Warmth of Their Sons. Uh, this book has been praised uh, frequently on BookTube, and I have nothing but praise uh, for this book. Uh, Wilkerson's ability to weave interview materials, historical information into a compelling, moving, even uh, a narrative that contains actual narrative tension. Uh, is really, I think, remarkable. I think she's just a, a great, uh, a great writer uh, of nonfiction for that reason. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, I also read, uh, was really eager to read, "Speak Silence in Search of W. G. Sebald." Uh, first, really kind of think full academic biography, maybe of Sebald uh, by Carol Anger. I also reviewed this for Open Letters Review. Um, and I found this satisfying uh, as a fan of Seabald's writing. Uh, I found this really satisfying. It answered some questions. It gave me some insight into the author that I didn't have, which, you know, maybe that's the purpose of a, of a literary biography. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't think it was perfect. And there were, there were aspects of it and things about it that I, I found to be kind of problems. I thought Angier was a little bit too forgiving of Seabald at times. Um, and she was limited by her lack of access to uh, Sebald's uh, personal papers, uh, and a number of people didn't want to talk to her uh, about Sebald to be interviewed. So that put some limits on the book. But but I, I found it to be a satisfying read. If you're not a fan of W.G. Sebald, if you haven't read his four uh, primary books that are called novels, uh, and then even his long uh, form poem, um, which whose title I've just forgotten. This book might not be for you. This would be definitely a book for those who've read Sebald, and the author kind of counts on you knowing a lot about W.G. Sebald uh, when you go into it. I also uh, was a part of a group buddy read of Square Haunting by Francesca Wade. This book uh, made the rounds on BookTube, I believe. Was it last year? The beginning of this year? I think it was a part of the BookTube Prize. Not a book I got to read, but I, re I, I did a group buddy read of this with Stephanie Cohen. Cohen, uh, booktuber, uh, extraordinary in the sense that she comments and reads lots of stuff. She participates in a lot of buddy reading activities. Uh, Noelle the Book Rook also was a participant, and then Hannah from Hannah's Books. And I have to tell you that, that I thought this was just a really great book. Um, going back to Scott and Nell's uh, video about the language we use when you review uh, books, and I'll leave a link to that video down below. Uh, I don't do a star rating system, but I have, uh, I guess, you know, kind of qualified words I apply to books to indicate how much I like them. Uh, so if I say I liked a book, that's let's say that's like a three star. If I say a book's good, that's a four star. If I say a book's great, it's a five star. I think this is a great book. Uh, in part, I thought it was great because it's just, to me, such a real pleasure to read a work of nonfiction in which uh, the author uh, creates a structure, creates a plan, sets out a goal, 
uh, for themselves uh, in writing the book, something they're trying to move the reader from point A to point B on to get you to see kind of the connections and the point they're trying to make and uh, and kind of ties it all up and makes it all makes it all work in a way that isn't forced and is incredibly uh, uh, insightful. And I thought Square Haunting was just perfect for that. It basically tells uh, the story of five uh, female authors who happen to live at various times in the same area of London, a place called Mecklenburg Square, and what that place meant to them uh, as individuals, as women, as writers, and how they were connected and how, in effect, all five of these women, Virginia Woolf, Dorothy Sayer, uh, Eileen Power, H.D., and uh, Harrison, I forgot her first name, I knew I was going to, Jane Ellen Harrison, is that right? Yes. Uh, how they all kind of, across a period of time, created uh, a community of women that were writing history, rewriting history, changing the lives of women, changing their own lives. I just thought it just really, really worked well. If this had been one of my Book 2 Prize books in whatever year this was up for the Book 2 Prize, this would have been hard to beat for me because I just felt like it was just done so incredibly well. And Francesca Wade is a very good writer. Um, just very good prose. Anyway, uh, if you haven't read Square Haunting and you're interested in kind of group biographies, particularly particularly of group biographies, uh, uh, perhaps of, of women and, and kind of how... Uh, uh, women were able to kind of break free uh, to a certain extent, even though it still hasn't happened fully, of a lot of the, the, the absolute limits placed on what they could do, what they could achieve in writing and in, and, uh, in, and in academia. This is just a great book. Uh, so I also read two other nonfiction books in uh, November. One is this book called Wild Design, Nature's Architects by Kimberly Ridley. Uh, this is a book I also uh, I reviewed for Open Letters Review, so I won't talk about it much here. That review isn't up, but it's a, it's a highly illustrated book about uh, earth cycles and plants and animals and the incredible architectural structures they create as a part of their daily lives, how we benefit from those things. Uh, and just kind of glorying in the uh, rich diversity and creations of nature is kind of how I would put it. And uh, I, so I read that. And then I also read uh, Miss Dior by uh, uh, Justine Picardy, uh, which is supposed to be a biography of uh, Christian Dior's younger sister, Catherine, uh, who was a French resistance fighter and a survivor of the Ravensbrück uh, concentration, work camp, death camp. Um, and so I, I read that and I'm hoping to review this as well. So there you go. That was my wrap up for uh, November. My TBR for De December is overly ambitious. There's no way I'm going to get to this and calling it a TBR is probably just, uh, you know, kind of uh, ridiculous, but I'm going to call it that anyway, because my intent is to try to get to all these books, but now looking at my list, I see there are at least eight books on the list. I can't remember the last month I read eight books. I don't think I quite got to eight in November. But anyway, there are two things in this that I know I'm going to get to. So I'm going to mention those two first because they're buddy reads. The first is a buddy read of Mrs. Dalloway uh, by Virginia Woolf. I'm buddy reading this with Hannah of Hannah's Books' husband, David, and we are I'm really looking forward to that and, and getting to see uh, and hear David's insights about this. This is only my second Virginia Woolf novel. I'm a little embarrassed uh, by that, even though I know we're not supposed to be embarrassed by what we've read or haven't read. I'm a little embarrassed I haven't read more Virginia Woolf. I've read The Lighthouse, and I've read uh, A Room of One's Own. Uh, but this will be my second one of her novels, and I'm really looking forward to that and getting to talk to David about that. Also, buddy reading uh, Crooked House by Agatha Christie uh, with Britta Bowler uh, this month. Um, and this kind of, I guess, more fits in with the... Uh, mystery reading thing that goes on around Christmas time. Uh, this will be my first uh, Agatha Christie novel. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. How have I gotten to be 54 years old and be somebody who reads, uh, you know, mysteries and detective fiction and never read Agatha Christie? I don't know. I did. So this will be my first Agatha Christie and, you know, who better to read it with uh, than, than Britta Bowler, so I'm really looking forward to that. Those are two books that I know for sure I'm going to read because they're buddy reads and I'm really looking forward to them. I also have on my list three books that I promised to read this year. Uh, that is, I talked to people or I said I would read them 
and for whatever reason that just hasn't happened yet. So these are also three books I for sure uh, want to get to. The first is, uh, and these will be all three of these books are books I'm going to be reading um, as uh, as ebooks uh, on my Kindle. So the first one is Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Uh, I think I told uh, Kazan from Always Doing that I was going to read this book uh, in June. Uh, and, you know, I really was looking forward to it. Uh, she was an enthusiastic uh, supporter of it, uh, of the book. And uh, I said I would read it, and I haven't yet. So I'm going to read that book this month. Uh, that also is part of my effort to read kind of more fiction from genres that are not normally uh, things I read. Uh, as is was with Stephen Graham Jones and Graham Jones and the horror novel. This would be a romance novel. I also promised early uh, in 2020 that I would read a Philip Roth novel uh, around the time of the controversy surrounding his biography. Uh, I had kind of mentioned that Philip Roth really didn't appeal to me. He was a type of writer I classified with, you know, John Updike. Um, as a, as, this, as a writer, I really wasn't that interested in. I had read Goodbye Columbus. A long time ago, I was encouraged to give him a shot, and I think that's valid if I'm going to, you know, lump him in with John Updike and maybe Saul Bellow, who I actually like more than uh, John Updike, uh, then I probably should read uh, his more mature work and some of the work that he has been more praised for. So I'm going to be reading American Pastoral this month. And then a long time ago, I promised Leo from the channel A Little Book Life, um, and Leo doesn't make very many videos anymore. Uh, that I would read, I think, what he classifies as his favorite fantasy series, which is Robin Hobbs, uh, and I'd start that series, the Farseer trilogy, trilogy, I believe is what called it, and I'm going to start by reading Assassin's Apprentice this month. Now, those are some pretty long books. I think Get a Life, Chloe Brown comes in around 350, uh, American Pastoral over 400, and I'm pretty sure Assassin's Apprentice is right at 500. So those are some pretty big books, and so already I, I feel like it's a little too ambitious. I told myself that I would read Lot by Sholo von Reinhold uh, this year. I'd seen this this book uh, praised, I think, by Mark Nash, and then uh, oh, I forgot the name of the other booktuber who this was one of their favorite books. I think last year. I'm a little slow in getting to it. Uh, so I did want to read this this book this month as well. I know almost nothing about it other than people whose opinions I respect uh, seem to like it. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I've seen, a, since Sally Rooney came out with a new novel this year, which I've seen uh, Steve Donahue destroy uh, and other people read, I thought I should finally read a Sally Rooney novel, and I thought I would read the one which seems to be, the consensus seems to be that of her three novels, this is the one that most people like, and that's Normal People. I did actually start reading it. Uh, I read about 30 pages of it uh, in November, and then I put it down uh, for December. It it does seem like a relatively fast read, uh, and so I'm going to try to read that. And then I have also as kind of my uh, absolutely way too ambitious read, I want to read Colson Whitehead's uh, new novel, Harlem Shuffle. I have a feeling this will get put off until January. But, you know, one of the reasons why I want to get to Lot and to Harlem Shuffle uh, is because... Uh, at the end of this month, I'll be compiling my list of my favorite reads of the year. And I think of, you know, at some point we had to make decisions. I think of all the books that I was planning on reading uh, in December that it's, in, that it's possible that those two books have the greatest chance to make that top 10. Anyway, there's my really long wrap up and my incredibly too um, um, optimistic TBR for December. I also want to take this moment, uh, since I mentioned this and talking about my wrap up, to talk about... Um, uh, the fact that I've, I've started begun, I've begun to try to start writing book reviews. Uh, and I have uh, been fortunate enough uh, that Steve uh, Donahue at Open Letters Review has, uh, has published on that website, uh, I think to this point, four of my reviews, and I'm hoping that he'll see fit to put up two more when I get them done. Uh, and that's just been really, really fun. Uh, and it's been really, really useful to me. It has kind of restored uh, some level of confidence uh, that I used to have in, uh, in the idea that I could write a little bit. Um, and, and it's created a, a, a sense of discipline uh, in my days, give me something to work towards, something to work on that, you know, in retirement, I've been somewhat missing. I have been casting around for, you know, some retirement uh, jobs and work opportunities. Uh, and while, you know, Open Letters Review doesn't pay, and that's fine, I'm not complaining at all. 
uh, it has been a, a kind of work, and that's given me more purpose. And I just wanted to say something really quickly here about Steve Donahue. Uh, if you know anything about uh, Steve Donahue and I, you know that we probably disagree on about 85% of things, from books to politics to whatever. We, we disagree often, and we have a good time, Steve and I do, in disagreeing with one another. And I think sometimes people think that we don't actually like one another. And I would say that, that at least from my point of view, I consider Steve to be a friend. Uh, not somebody I've ever met in per person, but a friend. And I know that Steve has controversial opinions. I know he has outspoken those opinions. Uh, oftentimes, I disagree vehemently with his opinions. But I will tell you that, that Steve is a generous, kind uh, person um, and that... If you are interested in trying your hand at book reviewing, he is a, a great mentor. Uh, if you've ever read his book reviews, he, is, he writes incredibly, I think, elegant prose uh, about books. So, uh, you know, if, you, if you've ever thought about writing book reviews, you know, wanted to try your hand, please take him up on his offer. Uh, and get in contact with him. I'll, of course, leave a link to his channel down below, as well as the other channels I talked about. I just wanted to take a moment to say something uh, nice about Steve and to thank him for the encouragement and support he's given me because that has led me to go back to work on my own writing project, which was a, uh, a kind of unit history uh, about a, an American military unit fighting in the Pacific during World War II, which for a long time has been languishing in the editing process because I just got really discouraged about it. And getting back to work and, and getting support kind of from Steve uh, and from others of you who have, who have encouraged me. Uh, Mark Nash, uh, Too Tight, Latrec have all uh, mentioned things uh, about this, among others. Uh, that I, I've, I'm, I'm not going to write any more reviews uh, after, hopefully, uh, the Miss Dior review this month. And I am already back to work on editing uh, that book. Uh, there are some things I need to write to add to it. There are some structural changes I need to make. And then there's just the creating of the uh, citations for where I got the information in the book. And then hopefully in January, I will have it in shape where I feel comfortable sending it out uh, and querying publishers about it. Uh, and so if you know of any good uh, publishers who, who accept uh, book proposals uh, that kind of concentrate on military history, please leave those in the comment section below so I'll have some places perhaps to send uh, to send my manuscript. Anyway, so that's just been really good and I'm really looking forward uh, to getting that done. Uh, I also wanted to take this opportunity to shout out some specific, some new channels to me. I kind of already did this and this is a new channel so I'm gonna shout out a specific video. And that is the video that Scott Nell did over Gunpowder Fiction and Plot about the language of reviewing and the language we use in review, reviewing, which was just, just great. Sean the Book Maniac praised that video. Uh, in his Friday Reads video as well. It's just great. I'll leave a link to it down below. The four new channels I want to talk about or, or draw your attention to is number one is The Midnight Reader. The creator of there is name is Roska uh, and uh, she's an incredibly enthusiastic reader, a really active, energetic person. You know, I could not, you know, she's a good deal younger than I am, but but I really like her opinions about books. I really like her vlogging. She did this thing where she wonder, walked around to little free libraries uh, in her neighborhood uh, to see what books they had, which I, I thought was just great. Also, then I wanted to draw your attention to a, a channel called The Greener Side of Sam. It's all smooshed together as one word. And Sam creates funny kind of parody videos, uh, videos that are, that are satire, but also... Uh, poetry and book reviews and just a really entertaining channel so I'll leave a link to that channel as well as Midnight Reader down below. Um, also MJ at a, a very new channel uh, called Reading This Life uh, did a review a discussion of In Cold Blood by Truman Capote, a book I've never read. It was my daughter's favorite book uh, which I thought was really good. I've been watching some of her videos. Uh, I think I found her through the booktube newbie tag, perhaps, or maybe one of you uh, recommended the channel. So I wanted to uh, kind of amplify that today. She has just the greatest maybe reading nook I've ever seen and she that was built into a closet. And the last channel I want to mention is Mariana Moss Books. Uh, just an incredibly lovely, enthusiastic uh, reader and commenter uh, here on booktube who's relatively new uh, and has really... Uh, her channel really 
uh, I think I found her channel because of a comment about the Tolkien video I made, and she's been doing a lot of Tolkien content as well as lots of other stuff. Please go check out all those channels. Links in the description below. Wrap up this Saturday hodgepodge now by saying my usual. Look forward to your comments in the comments section below, and as always, thank you for watching.